Hey guys, it's DT. Welcome back to part three in my big countdown series. If you're just joining us, I am counting down the top 100 most valuable comic books in my collection. So we've already taken a look at numbers 100 through 51. So if you've missed any of those videos, make sure to check them out. I'll leave a link in the description down below. But today we're gonna to be taking a look at numbers 50 through 26. Before we get into the box, a lot of people were asking what I was using to catalog and come up with the prices. So I'm actually using an app called CLZ Comics. It was recommended to me by my friend Alex the Comic Quarter. It's a pretty cool app. Once you enter in all your books, it gives you a bunch of information about the book. In addition to the value, there's little thumbnail images of the covers and you're able to update the values with just a click of the button, which is what I was looking for. I believe they get the values from Go Collect. Those values are taken from recent sales, uh, either from eBay or auctions. So of course they probably miss a few private sales in there, uh, some transactions that aren't recorded, but it gives you a nice general idea of what the book is going for. So thanks Alex for the recommendation. Uh, the app is turning out awesome. Alex has his own top 50 on his channel. If you guys like these kind of countdown videos, uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy that. So make sure you check that one out after you watch this video. Okay, so let's get on to box number three. So another thing I need to mention before we start this video is that I did an update of all the prices before I started this video because I did notice that there were quite a few shifts in value. Uh, and it kind of screwed up my order. Some books kind of jumped ahead a few spots, so I had to do some reorganizing, but hopefully I have everything situated here. So uh, let's go. So coming in at number 50, we've got this book right here, The Transformers number one. This book came out in 1984. I bought it raw. I believe I got this one from Toys R Us of all places. So it is a newsstand copy. I got this one graded not too long ago. It came back a 9.8 with white pages. This one features a ton of first appearances when it comes to Transformers. This originally was a four issue limited series, kind of made to sell additional toys at the time, but uh, due to its popularity, it went on to have a much longer run. And this is probably gonna stay in my collection forever because this is one of the first comic books that I ever bought. And this one is currently valued at $2,000. So number 49, we've got another Amazing Spider-Man. This is the Amazing Spider-Man number seven, featuring the second appearance of the Vulture. This one's got a Stanley Story, Steve Ditko art and cover. Came out in 1963. Bought this one a few years back to complete my Amazing Spider-Man run. This one is an 8.0 with off-white to white pages. And this one too is valued at $2,000. So number 48 is another one I picked up raw back in the 80s. It is the Amazing Spider-Man number 300. This one of course is the first full appearance of Venom. Thing makes an appearance and it is the last black costume. This one's got the iconic Todd McFarlane cover. It came out in 1988. I actually have two copies of this. I forgot I have this one. One is a little bit more orange. The other one's a little bit more red. And that's kind of a common thing you'll find with the ASM 300s. I think it kind of had to do with how they came off of the printer. I thought this darker one was in a little better condition. I thought it was gonna be a 9.8 but it came back a 9.6 and this one as well. So I'm happy with that grade. These books in their current condition are worth $2,050. Moving on to number 47, we've got another ASM. This one is The Amazing Spider-Man number five, featuring the first Doctor Doom appearance outside the Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four also makes a cameo in this issue. This one came out in October of 1963, 7.0 with off-white pages and is valued at $2,200. Number 46, another Amazing Spider-Man. This one is annual number one, came out in 1964. This one featured the first appearance of the Sinister Six, has a Fantastic Four, Giant Man, Wasp, Thor, Iron Man, Doctor Strange, and X-Men cameo. It also included 15 pinups. This one had 72 big pages, came in at a whopping 25 cent cover price. This one is a 5.5 with white pages and is currently valued at $2,250. So for this next one, we are fast forwarding to the glorious 90s where we have the New Mutants number 98 featuring the first appearance of Deadpool. Also has the first appearance of Gideon and Copycat, Vanessa Carlisle as Domino and Richter leaves the New Mutants. Here we have this iconic cover 
by Rob Liefeld. This one I bought brand new off the shelves in 1991. Unfortunately, I only bought one copy of this. Uh, instead of buying 200 copies of Spider-Man number one, I should have bought a few hundred of this one. This one at a 9.8 with white pages is currently valued at $2,350. So number 44 is another one from my childhood. This one is G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, number one from 1982. This is one of the first back issues I ever purchased. I think I bought it for $10. I believe number two was worth more at the time. I remember having to pay $30 for that one, but this one was only 10 for some reason. So I don't really know why, because when I look at the values today, this one is definitely worth more than number two. If you guys know why number two cost more back in the 80s, uh, leave a comment down below. And I got it graded the same time I got the Transformers and the ASM 300 graded. This one in this near mint 9.8 condition with white pages, is currently valued at $2,400. So another book I probably should have picked up more copies of when I was a kid. So number 43, we have an X-Men book. This one is X-Men number 12, featuring the first appearance of the Juggernaut. It also has the origin of Professor X, the Juggernaut's half-brother. Definitely one of the coolest X-Men villains. This one came out in July of 1965. Features a Stan Lee story, Jack Kirby cover and layouts. This copy is a 6.5 with off-white pages, currently valued at $2,700. Next up, we've got Marvel Spotlight number 28. This one came out in 1976, features the first solo Moon Knight story. I really had no desire to get this book when I got it. This was part of the Marvel Spotlight lot that I had won an auction for. I was really going after the Ghost Rider appearances, but uh, this was one of the books that was in there as well. Kind of happy that I have it now. I did press this one and get it graded and it came back a 9.8 with white pages. And this one is also valued at $2,700. Next up, we've got an older book. This one is Tales to Astonish number 13. Features the first appearance of Groot. This one was released by Atlas Comics. Uh, so this was pre-Marvel days. So even though his name is Groot, it's not really the Groot that we've come to know from Guardians of the Galaxy and even other comic books. He was kind of just a monster in this story. Nonetheless, this is the first appearance of a tree-like character called Groot. This one had a 10 cent cover price. This one came in at a 5.0 with off-white pages. And this book in this condition is worth $2,800. Our next one is another Amazing Spider-Man book. This one is The Amazing Spider-Man number 13, featuring the first appearance of Mysterio. This one was from June of 1964. Cool classic Mysterio cover. This one was a 7.0 with off-white pages, and it too is valued at $2,800. So next up, we've got an X-Men book. This is X-Men number 94, which featured the first appearance of the new X-Men team in the X-Men title. This one came out in August of 1975. And this one is cool because it says it has Dave Cockrum written on the first page in pen. And back in the day, that was where artists signed the comic books on the first page, kind of on the bottom margin. These days, they sign right on the cover, right over the artwork. Of course, I don't know what it looks like because I've never opened this comic book up, but it's kind of cool to know that it's in there. Very significant book because prior to this, the X-Men title had kind of died off and gone into reprints, uh, but they brought it back with a new team here in issue number 94. It had a cover price of 25 cents. This one is an 8.0 with off-white pages currently valued at $3,100. The next one is another Amazing Spider-Man. This is the Amazing Spider-Man number nine, featuring the first appearance of Electro. It came out in 1964. It looks like the Jamie Foxx Electro is coming back. We'll have to see what kind of role he plays in the next Spider-Man movie. So this one came in at a 7.0 off-white pages. And this one too was valued at $3,100. The next one, we are back with the X-Men with X-Men number four. This book has been hot lately, not only because it is an early X-Men issue, but it also features the first appearance of the Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, Toad, and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. It also features the second appearance of this guy right here, Magneto. Uh, this one came out in 1964, a 4.5 with cream to off-white pages. This book is valued at $3,200. 
Okay, back to Spider-Man. We've got ASM number six. This one featured the origin and first appearance of the lizard back in 1963. Half man, half reptile, the lizard will take over all the earth unless Spider-Man alone can stop him. Uh, this one came in at a 7.5 with off-white to white pages and is currently valued at $3,200. Okay, number 35, we've got another one from that Marvel Spotlight lot that I won. And this one is Marvel Spotlight number five, the first appearance of Ghost Rider. There were actually two issues of this in that lot. You'll see the other one later on, but this one is the 7.0 with white pages. I recently pressed this myself and submitted it. Came back a 7.0 with white pages. It also featured the first appearance of Roxanne Simpson. This one came out in 1972, and this book was the reason why I wanted to bid on that auction. I'd say it was a pretty good deal since a lot of them are in this series. So in this condition, this book is worth $3,200. Okay, so we're jumping from Ghost Rider to the Fantastic Four. This is issue number 49. Features the first full appearance of Galactus, the second appearance of the Silver Surfer, and the first Silver Surfer and Galactus cover. This one was released in 1966. It's got a Stanley story covered by Jack Kirby and Joe Sinnott. This one is an 8.0 with off-white pages, currently valued at $3,300. Next up, we've got an Iron Man book. This is Iron Man number 55. You wouldn't know it by looking at the cover, but this is the first appearance of Thanos. It's also the first appearance of Mentor, Drax the Destroyer, Star Fox, Kronos, and the Blood Brothers. This one came out in 1973. It's a 9.6 with off-white to white pages and comes in at $3,400. Okay, and looky here. It's another Amazing Spider-Man. This is The Amazing Spider-Man number two from 1963, featuring the first appearance of the Vulture and the Terrible Tinkerer. And this is also the second issue of The Amazing Spider-Man, so very significant book. This one is a 5.5 with white pages and is valued at $3,500. Okay, it's time for another time warp. We are going from the 60s to the 90s with The Batman Adventures number 12, featuring the first appearance of Harley Quinn. On the cover here, uh, Batman has been crossed out and it's written The Batgirl Adventures. This is kind of based on the animated TV show, but uh, nonetheless, we have the first Harley Quinn. This one was back in 1993, a 9.8 with white pages, and is also valued at $3,500. So another book I should have bought more of back in high school. All right, number 30, we've got another Fantastic Four. This one is the Fantastic Four number 50, which features the third appearance of the Silver Surfer. Johnny Storm also goes to college in this issue, and it's also the first appearance of Wyatt Wingfoot. This one came out originally in 1966, 9.0 with off-white to white pages, and is currently valued at $3,700. So we still have a few more in this box. Uh, it's funny we had Silver Surfer because the next one is Silver Surfer number one. This one came out in 1968. It retells the origin of the Silver Surfer. The Tales of the Watcher begins and the origin of the Watchers. I have another ungraded copy, probably maybe a 4.0, but this one is an 8.0. This one had a 25 cent cover price, uh, currently valued at $3,900. Next up, we've got another oversized book this one is the giant size X-Men number one. So we saw the first appearance of the new team in the actual X-Men title, but this was actually their first appearance in this one shot that featured the first appearance of Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, and Thunderbird. It also featured the second full appearance of Wolverine. Now this one came out back in 1975. Definitely a history making issue as far as the X-Men is concerned. I actually have a couple more issues of this book that you'll see later. This one is the 5.5 with off-white to white pages. And in that condition, this book is worth $4,000. We've got two more books in the box. This one is The Avengers. This one is issue number four, featuring the return of Captain America. This is the first Silver Age appearance of Captain America. Uh, Submariner also makes an appearance. This one came out in 1964. 
It's graded at a 6.5 with cream to off-white pages. I probably would have got a better grade, but there is this little bite that's been taken out of the cover. Somebody got a little bit too rough turning the pages, I guess. But other than that, this book is in great condition. But a 6.5 comes in at $4,000. And for our final book of this episode, we've got another Spider-Man book. This one is ASM number 14, featuring the first appearance of the Green Goblin. This one came out in July of 1964. The Enforcers also made an appearance, and it's also the first meeting of Hulk and Spider-Man. This one is a 7.5 with off-white pages. And this book, too, is valued at $4,000. Okay guys, so that's gonna do it for part three. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you guys have any of the books that I showed you today, which ones were your favorite. If you guys missed part one and two, make sure to check those out. Also make sure to check out my buddy Alex's top 50 video. And make sure to come back for part four. If you like big keys, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.